Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Steelers Sanctuary Podcast, episode 25. I'm your host, Dave Rivero from SteelersSanctuary.com. This is my co-host, David Gorob. What's up, Dave? Hi. <laughs> We're coming to you about an hour after the Steelers' 17-14 loss to the New England Patriots. Um, man, what a fucking game. Tough. Tough to watch. I hate being yeah, that Dave. Yeah, rough. Yeah, that dude. I'm sitting there. I'm actually at my son's baseball game watching the fucking – Steelers game on my phone with the headphones in and a bunch of people next to me are, are they recorded the game. So they asked me not to like <laughs> say React. anything oh, out God. loud. So I'm over there just, you know, furious and I'm trying to hold it all in. So they're looking over and I'm shaking my head and looking away. Cause I'm basically cussing underneath my breath. You know, <laughs> they're just like, they're like you get over there, dude. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. You know, we're all right. They're like, okay. D- just, oh, I, I just, I can't tell you how many times I'm, 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 I'm watching this and I'm just like, oh my God, it's every place. Check it to Najee. Check it down to Najee. Check it down to Najee. Where's Najee? That's, that's it. That's all. That's all Mitch fucking did. Well, like, since you, it was the most annoying shit. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Since you brought that up, I was going to save it for later, but. Here's the final two drives, fourth quarter for the Steelers. Drive number one, Najee Harris, two-yard run. Second down, incomplete pass to Pickens. Third down, uh, Najee Harris, two-yard completion, punt. Second drive, fourth quarter. This is with them down three, backed up pretty close to their goal line. One was at the 10, one was at the 20. Drive two, first down, Najee Harris, five-yard run. Second down, Najee Harris, three-yard completion. Third down. Incomplete pass to Najee Harris, punt. They never see the ball again. No one for the Steelers touched the ball except for Najee Harris in the fourth quarter. I, it's almost, if it wasn't the Steelers, I'd say it's impossible. But with Matt Canada and this goddamn offense, it is possible. Dude, I, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, it was just, I don't know if Mitch just like was just that off today that that Najee was just his comfort and his comfort blanket or whatever the hell that's called. And, and he just didn't want to, he just didn't want to make mistakes. So he would not throw the fucking ball downfield unless he had to, yep. and, and, and it, but it was nonstop. And you're like, you're sitting there and you're like, bro, it's third and eight. Like how many third and eights, third and longs did we see them check it down to Najee or it was a dump off pass to, to uh, one of those wide receiver three and outs or whatever. It was just like, what, why are, what is this? This was the shit that we did with Ben. And uh, supposedly we fucking did it because his arm was shredded. And now no. I'm seeing no. that's not fucking true at all. This is, this is Matt Canada's offense. And they found the one guy that has is that can't throw fucking accurately. and makes huge mistakes to run this. It's bad, really bad. And, and I mean, I'm sitting there, and, and they only have three points going into the half. And I'm sitting there going, holy shit, Dave was right. He was fucking right. They're literally not going to put up more than six points today. I, I, was, I was like, I text you. I was like, holy shit, dude. You, you nailed it. You fucking nailed it. You think about it, that whole game. If you think about that whole game, that one drive they scored a touchdown was such an aberration. It's like the Patriots took a drive off of something after they scored. It was weird because outside of that one drive, they were just yeah, like on the drive where they scored, awful. they were opening up lanes for Najee and Warren, and it was like, whoa, okay, yeah, they got some here. Then they were getting some nice passes, and it, they had a good flow going on that on that drive to score a touchdown. And then what the fuck happened? Like it just disappeared. It was back to the first half. Yep, we didn't they, see it before or after. It was just that one, like that I said, one drive. It, they yeah. were making lanes for Najee and Warren, and. I'm going to be honest here. Najee in the beginning was doing, doing that dancing shit and not hitting the hole. Did you notice when Warren got put in and he, as soon as he got the ball, boom, he picked the hole and went and they were getting down the field more with that. Then Najee started doing it more towards the third quarter. And that's when they, they moved the ball in that one drive. There was no more hesitation or trying to bounce it outside all the time. And I, you know, I just don't know what to think with him. I really don't like, I just don't, he, he seemed like he was getting a lot better in the third, fourth quarter. But then it became the security blanket for for uh, 
for Trubisky. They just keep checking it down to Najee. It's like, bro, it's a third and eight. It's third and 10, third and 12, third and fucking 14. Quit fucking checking it to Najee. And it was nonstop. Pickens, wide open. There was time where DJ, wide open. How about the pass to Najee where he fucking threw it behind him when if he would have floated it in front of him, Najee would have caught the ball and got more than a first down. Najee even signaled, hey, man, throw it in front of me. Like, And then he said DJ threw his hands up to the sideline on the, on the pass to him that it was just like, bro, what are you doing? I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. The Patriots stopped the run. Trubisky threw a pick. And from that point forward, he was just shook. He was confused. He didn't want to throw the ball over the middle because he was paranoid he was going to throw a pick. Every time he did throw the ball over the middle, it was like heart attack because the ball's floating all over the place. Oh, he was they, forcing throws too. It was yeah. just awful. Now, here's my um on the on the interception. Was it third down? Do you remember? I don't remember off the top of my head. Because they they had uh they they had uh, Pickens, I was third go, down. go in it motion. Was. Okay, they had him go in motion, and he had he didn't have a guy in front of him for like like fifteen yards, and yep. I, I mean remember. wide open, and he didn't even look his way, bro. All he cared about was throwing it to DJ. That was his one read, and even right. though the the, th- the the throw wasn't there, like you, you weren't going to find him, he forced it anyways. And he did this last game, and he did this game. You know, as we and talked about last game, one read. He doesn't come off his reads. He's, he, he gets doesn't. nervous, happy feet. His eyes, you know, come off the receivers, and they, they start looking at the rush. This guy's this guy's broken. He's not. We're and seeing what, what the Bears fans saw. He's a broken quarterback. He's not good. What What was up with the, the running and not getting rid of the ball and just getting sacked? He's just, like I said, like, he's broken. He doesn't know what he he's had, doing. He had all fucking day to get rid of that ball. And he still chose to run and run towards out of bounds and, and just get sacked. It was like, throw the fucking ball. You got, if you got to get rid of it, there's wide receivers all over that side. Just throw it near them. Avoid the sack. Like this is, this is like basic quarterback shit that apparently he don't understand. And it's two games in a row that he doesn't understand. this. Well, this is him. No football IQ whatsoever. Just he's he's got a good arm. He's he's talented. He's athletic, but he's got no football IQ. You can just see it. He's like a deer in the headlights back there. His first read's not there. It's over. It's over. So the play's dead. So okay. So this is just me. I know this ain't gonna happen, but this is just me. So they got a short game. They got Cleveland on yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Um. So if they if they lose and he looks like trash again, right? So in theory, and just hear me out here. In theory, so they lose if they lose Thursday, they'll have what nine, ten. I try to do the math there. Yeah, it's, 10 days. it's so. about 10 okay. days. Yeah. They will have 10 days with Kenny Pickett to get ready to where they're only one and two. So that's not like they're dead, you know, dead man walking in the division. If they really want to give Kenny a shot and see if he is indeed better. What I mean, at this point, what 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 do they got to lose? Like if they're this bad. They're at the bottom. Like, the only way to go is up. But you ain't going to go up with who you got there now. I mean, I'm convinced. This is the second game in a row where, yeah, he's he's not it. And I can see it. He forces throws. He, he only does one to two reads. He misses open wide receivers. And when they are open, he overthrows them half the time. He's garbage. And, and I, I hate to say it. Like, I really want to give this guy a shot. But, like, two games in, they've scored two tu- two offensive touchdowns. In yeah. two games. I have that is my, it. Yeah, my notes, this offense is like historically battery after two games. They're averaging 15 points a game. you got to take the touchdown that the defense scored out to, to, to the averaging 15 offensive points per game. They haven't scored 30 points in 10 games in a row now under Matt Canada. Oh. They've only done it once under him. In the Mac. It was November 21st against the Chargers. I looked it up this, this afternoon. That was their one 30-point game. Najee Harris, after two games, has less than 100 yards combined. He's got like 70 something. Mitch Trubisky hasn't thrown for 200 yards yet this season, both games under 200 yards. Um, when we looked at our prediction show, we didn't think of the, the Thursday night game gives them 10 days. So it's a good point. Right. If they wanted to make me. a change, 
they possibly could after the Browns. in this in this i swear to god in this moment it just hit me like yeah. i was I'm, I'm sitting here bitching like fucking crazy and it just hit me i was like wait a second thursday if they lose like they got 10 days like that's a lot of time for them if they want to make the switch now and we don't said in the beginning of the season this was matt canada's last chance this is matt canada's last last chance if they do bring kenny pickett in and this offense still stinks then you got to go then he's got to go you got to yeah. get rid of him like, and I, I worry sometimes the Steelers are slow to get rid of co- coordinators they really are they, they they try to hang on you know they kept keith butler forever he because they believe good. in they believe in continuity like yeah. that's just that's just how they are so i, I mean three that. three coaches over the last what 60 years like yeah. that's just that's just how they roll dude that's just i can always sit here all day and way. say last chance last chance last chance with me he might have more than more than they, this. like they, i said i know it won't happen but if they wanted to make the switch to kenny if, if it's another dreadful uh game for trubisky you could argue now would be the time 10 days to to get him ready and and go from there. I, I don't know. I'm just saying because, dude, two. Do you know I'm I'm watching the Cowboy game, and do you know Cooper Rush has already marched them down the field for two yeah. fucking touchdowns? Yeah. Already, he has yeah. the same amount in two drives as Trubisky in two fucking games. Like, unreal. I, I just just wow. look at what the the Dolphins did with Tua again on the road against the the Ravens defense. They scored 42 points, dude. They scored 42 points. The Dolphins, Mike McDaniel's a, a, a wizard, and Matt Canada is just. Did you did you see again? Like I think they showed two passes in the middle of the field again today. It was like two or one of them was an interception. Three. Yeah, like that was it. Like I, uh, I, I don't. Again, we're going to do this all until they change quarterbacks. We're going to do this. We're not going to know. Is it Matt Canada's game plan, or does Mitch Trubisky not like to throw over the middle either? Now I think but it's it happens a, a third time. If they put Pickett in and it happens again, then it's on Canada. Like I said, this is all it's, on. It's a mixture of both, though. Like, it's – first off, Trubisky does not see people that are open. If they're not in his, like, first or second read, you don't – he doesn't know because he's not looking, right? And then, two, I think it's a mixture of most of Matt Canada's play calls are, like, five-yard plays. Like, they're not – that's just all, – all of his plays are either some misdirection, right? misdirection and dump it off to whoever whether it be the wide receiver whether it's a cut back a screen like it, it, all of it is designed to be within five yards of the line of scrimmage i'm convinced unless they have to go like like they have to go 15 yards for first down then nothing is projected to be a long pass the only time they threw long passes was at the end of the second quarter when they had to they had no yeah. choice right yeah, and it, it was like 20 and seconds Pickens, left on the clock. Yeah. What do you know? Pickens had a nice catch on the sideline, yeah. right? Toe tapped it, right? But then there was another one. What happens? Trubisky airmails it over fucking Deontay's yeah. head. And Deontay almost caught it. And yeah. it's like, Jesus, dude. Like, I, I just, this is a nightmare situation. I tried I mean, to be positive about it. Yeah. I was like, oh, you know, it's second game. I think, you know, they'll start to establish, look, look a lot better. Nope. You were dead on. Like, nope. I couldn't run up. the ball. They did a little bit better than last week, but still not good enough. And see, I admit, I knew they weren't going to run the ball well. I just really thought that Trubisky would do better than this. Like, no. I thought you learned your lesson, right? Find ways to get the ball to Pickens. You know, I, I really thought they did. Throw the ball down the middle. Take some more deep shots. Do the shit that you didn't do last game and see what happens. And he didn't do it. Look how the Patriots won the game. Deep shot down the fucking. Yeah, field. they don't take they don't take many deep shots at all anymore, do they? They they don't. They, I tweeted twice today. This is a, a spot where the Steelers usually take a deep shot just to you know just for the fuck of it. You don't see it anymore. I haven't seen since Matt Canna took. It's been three or four years, dude. Since I you know the 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 heyday of of Roethlisberger just fucking rearing back and letting it go, man, and letting like you know Brown go get it or Juju or yeah. whoever. It's been. A long time. This this fucking offense with Canada is all about side to side, and it's not about going down the field. Yeah, it's, it's and all I'm, trick and shit. I, trick shit, and you it's know, side reverses to side. And, and yes. yeah, it's always it's, it's always it's always east to west. It's never south to north. Yep. Like yep, you're right. You're and right. it's it's driving me fucking insane because everybody knows this. So everybody plays yeah, up in the box. 
they Protected. play up in the box. Yeah. And they, and as soon as they catch the ball, boom, they're down. Yeah. And it ha- like, I, I just, I, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Just I gotta tweeted change. it during the game. You got Pickens is a 4 3 speed, Claypool, 4 3 speed, Deontay, 4 4 speed. Where is the deep shots? Where's the plays downfield? Where are the big plays? And Tomlin's problem- mentioned it twice in the press conferences. No splash plays. He's getting tired of it, it seems like. Yep. Hopefully he's getting tired of it because the rest of us are. Yeah. We can't do much more of this. This is historically bad offense yep. for what 17, 18 games last year if you include the playoffs and two more this year. It's, it's 20 games of historically bad. They can't run the ball for anything. Yeah. I know. And now and now they can't throw the ball in the middle of the field at all. Because so I mean how predictable if, is that? And you gotta think about it, right? Like, so if all their play calling is east to west right yeah you can you can just stack the box and go oh well, if they run it we're already stacked in the box anyways so you can you can you can stop this offense either way you're setting up to stop both because you don't got to worry about the deep shot down the field that's why when they did it it worked when pickens made the catch yep. and would have worked if fucking trubisky could throw an accurate ball to uh, Deontay. so like they're setting up to stop the run altogether but they know that they can set it up short to stop those passes too. Two years ago, two years ago, the uh, commanders were the team that figured out, remember we were 11 and 0 and they figured it out, load the box, spread out, load the box. We will destroy this, these play calls. And they did. And ever since that moment, it took either Ben throwing long bomb after long bomb when he was, when he started running his own plays, remember? Yeah. Yeah. That's what offense is the only thing that worked. And look today, two-minute yeah. offense. Wow, weird, huh? So, I just... And when you think back to that, Dave... I just don't know how they don't see this. But anyways, go ahead. When you think back to that, too, it was Randy Fitchner that last year, but Matt Canada was the quarterback's coach. Correct. But he was he had a big influence on that offense. So, yes. it's really three years running with, with right. his influence. That, that's my point. My point yeah. is that he was heavily involved with that already. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you know, that whole thing with Fitchner that last year was like, whatever that's like you know weekend at bernie's where you got the dead guy and you're pretending like (laughs) he's still fucking alive but it's really not him you know i that's what that was with fickner anyways uh yeah just it's basically been three years and it's it sucked ever since teams figured it out it's over and they never made a change to it they continue to keep pushing further into this yes to where it's Side to side, yeah. not yeah. north to south, south to north. It's it's the same shit. Nothing down the middle, and they're getting destroyed for it. It don't. And here's the thing: like you said, if it is indeed just the play calling, we will find out if they put Kenny Pickett in. And I'm telling you, if they, if this is just me, if they lose to Cleveland, you got ten days. Yeah, it's to the, get it's, Kenny Pickett in there, get everything figured out, and look. I saw somebody said there, it might've been uh, DK. Somebody said that the players in the locker room, a lot of them were visibly upset. Like they are fucking pissed. And fucking I can tell you exactly. Loser. I can tell you three of them right now. I know for a fact are yeah, DJ, yeah. DJ Pickens and fucking Najee too. Yeah. All oh, three yeah. are pissed off because Najee would have had that first down and more. If Trubisky doesn't throw it fucking behind him, where it almost could have got picked off. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. And Pickens, my man, I, I feel so bad for that dude. Yeah, he's not all that any hype targets and, at all. And because he's the third, fourth read, he don't he don't, he don't look for him. He don't. What did the broadcast say? Uh, um, Tomlin called uh, Pickens uh, a super freak or something. Well, you're not. You have no plays designed for this guy. You've right. a, a quote unquote super freak talent on your offense, and you've got zero plays called, and you, <laughs> and you don't what? utilize him. Now figure that out. All right, as bad as this offense played, and it was bad. Man, if Gunner doesn't fumble that punt, I know they probably win this game. That was such a huge swing, such a terrible boneheaded <sighs> play. I just, but it seems like the Steelers do this a lot. I, Big look, moments, they make dumb plays. <sighs> it just drives me bananas. I'm watching the slow mo replay. Hits him in the head, right? How the fuck do you let it hit you in your fucking head? It, like you get paid millions of dollars. To know how to catch the fucking football on a punt, like you, I just don't know how he did. Like I think his eye, I think he was too worried about that guy in front of him or something. 
Just call but a fair did, catch. Did he? Like, that's the thing. Did he call fair no, catch? No, he didn't. He was trying to return that ball. I again, think. again, getting paid millions of dollars to do that. That is supposed to be the one job you fucking know how to do. And you fucking did that. Oh, I, I just. Taylor, two special teams play, right? The, the Patriots muffed that first kickoff but they never have control of it. So it's not a safety. Oh yeah. A, that was wild. If that's a safety or if, if Gunner doesn't fumble that it's the Steelers probably it's win this game despite it's, all this crap, despite as bad as the offense played. It's just, it's so hard to swallow. Ugh. It is. And right, uh, we'll flip, go ahead. Yeah. Go, no, no. I think we'll, you're going to go to defense now, right? Yeah. We'll flip to defense now. Right. Boy, TJ Watt not being there really hurt this team they had no pass rush whatsoever no sacks today not that even was, a lot of hurries it was bad. that was so incredible how different they looked with that like i thought that like they would generate some kind of pressure but but here's the thing they didn't do the the mallet let's play like they did against the Bengals. Yeah. i didn't see any of that now what they did do that we fucking nailed yeah we said they could move the out the outside they could move can to the outside and they did they yeah, that was nice to see. Yeah, we called yeah. that one. That was a good one. We called it, and they fucking did it. And uh, I wish it had worked better. But, well, Liel uh, had a couple good plays. Yeah. They didn't use him as much as I think they should have. But yeah, um, but uh, I just, I just couldn't believe how they they didn't. Nope. I mean, they would dial up some blitzes, but it got picked up. Uh, Strange actually did a really good job against Camp. They actually oh, he, somebody he, brought that up on uh, on Twitter. They yeah. said that uh, Cole Strange did very good against Camp. Yeah, I was gonna say he did a little better than good. He I don't want yeah. to say dominated, but he he definitely held his own and, and kind of pushed the Steelers around at some point. Yeah, he did good. Um, um, I come back to that predictable word again, Dave. Their, their blitzes were so predictable. They didn't do yeah, anything. You knew. They didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Uh, the Patriots, the Patriots are too well coached. You can't do vanilla blitzes and expect to get home. It's not going to work. It just, I, just too I well tend coached. to agree with you because, like, when I saw their blitzes, I was like they know it's coming like they it, knew exactly not, what was coming yep they did and i, I and just uh in fairness mallette wasn't out there that much because the patriots don't do three wide receivers that much okay. so you're not going to have a chance to have but still you can bring Minka up to the line of scrimmage blitz him you can bring a corner off the edge do something because i did notice norwood was out there a lot though did you notice that yeah yeah i, I noticed that norwood was out there a lot um like i said they rotated Liao outside cam reed they get dude Reed got held a couple times. Yeah, they he did. did not That's fucking a good point. call. They I was called it pissed. once, but they could have called it three or four times. Yeah, they didn't call a false start on the one guy. Mm -hmm. He was false starting at least two or three times. That was and win, they weren't calling. Believe, it. Yeah, they called it once. Yeah, at the it was end. when he got one call, but he should have got yeah. three. Oh, like, yeah. he was like, bro, three seriously. Easy. But I just, I don't know. I, oh, I was game. getting, I was getting pissed because. On third and eight or third and long, it seemed like Spillane was always out there. That was on I'm my like, list to say. What the fuck? Like, why is this guy always out there in pass play? What are you doing? And then I guess apparently uh um uh Bush got hurt. Did you know I that? didn't see that? Did he get hurt? I didn't I didn't see yeah, that. But he didn't play uh, at the end of the game, he didn't come in at all. So I was wondering at one point. Yeah, I, I forget what they said it was. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, speculate. I can't remember. If they said ankle or something else. Damn it! Because they um, asked Tomlin about any injuries at the end of the press conference, and he said, "I don't have anything. I don't have anything." So, and I missed the beginning of the press conference, so I didn't hear if they asked any questions about Bush specifically. But yeah, it makes more sense. Listen, Robert Spillane should not be your third down linebacker. It doesn't make any sense. No. And the one play where they needed him to make a tackle on a running back off a screen to prevent a first down, he couldn't even make the tackle because. He's shitty in space. He doesn't take yep. good angles because he's not. That's not him. No, he's, he, he's a downhill linebacker. He's not a coverage guy. You only put him in the game on goal line situations. Goal lines a short yardage or right. That's it. You know, it, it, no third and eights, no third and tens. Like, I don't. I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get it. Yeah, that's that's not very good um strategy on the Steelers' part. Having and then and then they, they did they did, like uh they didn't even have Robinson because they they. No, he was an actor for the game. Yeah. So it's like – and then uh, – so it says here, Devin Bush has a foot injury. Mike Thomas said that forced him out of the game. No details from DK. Right. Uh, it's just – it's a foot injury, but they don't know what. On the bright side of the defense, they definitely played the run better than I thought they would. 
They held the Patriots in check pretty much the whole game. It wasn't. Was it wasn't very until concerned the end. about that. Yeah, they've been going down at the end. I knew that were, was going to happen. Yep, they're going to get tired, and yep. they, they were on the field too long. The last yep. two games, the Patriots eventually wore them down. But for the most part, early in the game, they played well enough to yeah, give the like, Seals a chance to win for sure. Like I said, or you know, if this defense is not constantly out there, like I, I do wonder how much better they would play. Like. Oh, you, I think today, even only giving up 17 points, I still feel like the defense did good for what the situation they were put in. Besides not getting pressure on the quarterback, yeah. Besides that, I still think they did a they did a good job. I I, I don't know. I, I just like I, said, I just didn't feel like play very well. I didn't think Witherspoon had a good game. He got beat for that long touchdown. He got beat a couple other times. And I oh dude, he's so good with his hands. Like I can't believe he didn't at least it, ha- uh, it knock happens out sometimes. Ball. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's so hard when you turn around and the ball's coming at the last minute. He could have played it better. I think Tomlin in the press conference said, uh, play the ball above your eyes better or something when they asked him about it. It's like, all right. Yeah. But he didn't have and a great then, uh, game overall. Sutton had the for sure interception. He dropped oh, it. That was a killer. I mean, they ended up stopping them, right? They didn't score on that drive, but the no. it was a big, big difference. But, dude, when you get it easy like that, Make yeah, the gotta, play. Gotta, gotta, gotta make the it. fucking play. Minka make. made a beautiful interception. That yeah. was a beautiful catch. But he, I mean, Minka is going to be in contention for defensive player of the year. He keeps yeah, playing like absolutely. this. Absolutely. Dude, he's. He's the best uh, safety in football. Yeah. Full abso- full absolutely. Um, trying to think. Uh, not much to talk about was, the defense. They played. Well, yeah. Was Levi Wallace, bad. was he. He played a little bit. He played well, I think. I saw him mix it up a little bit. I was going to say, I didn't think he was really victimized that much. It just seemed like it was always Witherspoon. Doesn't it feel like that? Yeah. This is a game Um, where um, he can thrive because he's such a good tackler and New England runs so much. that That's a good game for Wallace to be in. um, I thought Bush was doing good before he got hurt. I thought he did well. Bush and Miles Jack both played very well. They've both been playing good. I have no – Gripes, complaints about either one of them. The D line, I mean, the run, like you said, the, the running game actually wasn't too crazy till the end when they were worn down. Yeah, they did fine. Uh, Just no yeah. pass rush. That's the key. So, so it, they're going to be all right. Hopefully, uh, um, hopefully Bush is okay. Like hope, hope yeah. his ankle injury isn't too bad. Um, yeah, what sucks hopefully. is we got fucking what, four days Monday, Tuesday, we got four fucking days for him to and be Cleveland able. coming to town with that big running. And game. great, that means we're gonna have Spillane fucking out there. Let's hope not. the, the Let's only hope. way Robinson gets to get a freaking helmet is at the expense of Bush, and that's yeah. gonna suck. So, well, yeah, I guess if you if if there's a game you want Spillane in the game, it's against the Browns because they run a game. Lot. So you know, and Mike Robinson sense. too. I mean. Their quarterback I just, situations. I, I just remember and, that playoff game against the Browns, and they picked on Spillane a lot. Yeah. That coach is a dumb. He's a pretty good offensive coach, so he knows yeah, who to pick I mean, on. They, they had it to where he was covering uh, Landry way more than he should have been, and it was that yeah. ugly, ugly game. Um, but, yeah, no, I just uh, – yeah, as far as defense goes – uh, I was hoping Highsmith would step up a little more. Um, yeah, he but, was quiet. Yeah, um, very quiet. And then Mac uh, Jones is not the, the most athletic guy, but he's smart. He moves around the pocket just enough. He does to get he an did open fine. lane like to I, throw. You know, Mac he, Jones. He, he wasn't great, but he did what he had to do to move the sticks. I, I mean, it, you yeah. know, it's just, just you know, he didn't he didn't run clear the sideline when he had nobody open where he could easily throw and then take a sack. Like he didn't do that shit. He didn't do the dumb shit like our guy did. Like, that's the frustrating part there. We talk about football IQ. He's got it. Like, he manipulates safeties and corners. He moves people around with his eyes. He does He does all the little things that make you successful. And Mitch doesn't He do looked all. like the guy that's in his sixth year, while yeah. our guy looked like the fucking rookie out there, like, Absolutely. not having a clue. Like, I, it's just sad. But, uh, yeah, I just uh, – defensively-wise, they were going to get tired. They finally got tired, and yep. that's when they started running the ball down their throat. And they started getting those chunk plays, and the game was over. Yeah. They didn't even have to kick a field goal. They didn't have to do anything. They just had to keep getting first downs, chew out the clock. And that's what they did. They chewed up the last, what, four minutes, I think, of I think clock. It was six minutes. I think it was six. Ooh, was it six? Yeah. Okay, maybe it was, it was six. six. I mean, just because they just kept running the ball down the throat and it couldn't yeah. stop them. And the Steelers, and, again, wasting timeouts early in the half, so they only had two at the yep. end of the game. They yeah, I saw that. Game. I saw that. I was like, wait, why do we only have two fucking timeouts? What the hell? 
They burned like, it up oh. something stupid. I don't know. It was – It's this was a frustrating game. Oh, was it when the clock was about to run out? It might have been. Because Trubisky wasn't paying attention to the play clock. Like, oh. In the I first half, they burned it. one because they were trying to get the Patriots to jump off sides. And it didn't work, so they had to burn a timeout in the first half. And yeah, I think the second half was the play plot. It's it's all the same Steeler stuff. But when they lose, they do things certain things badly. It's like it's so they make dumb mistakes. They don't throw the ball in the middle of the field. They turn the ball over. It's just the same old shit every week, every week in and week out. When they, oh, I don't know. But we've only got four days now to turn around and for this Browns game. Believe it or not, I have a better feeling about this, the Browns game than I do this Patriots game. Do you really? Yeah, I think they're going to win. I think they're going to beat the Browns. I mean, we'll, we'll go over that next week. But um, special teams, you know, the gunner fumble. No, it literally resulted in the seven-point swing in their yeah, favor. It was I a... mean, there's no other way to put it. I, I You're getting paid millions of dollars, dude. Yeah. Make the catch. It wasn't even a hard catch. Like he was just standing there waiting for it. Like, and you let it hit you in the face. Like, come on. Like, you gotta be better than this. Three plays uh, changed this game. Well, two two plays really. The the long touchdown yeah. to Aguilar and the gunner fumble. Otherwise, yeah. it would have been a whole different and basically that's it. Like you're right. In a nutshell, that's the two plays that, that mattered the most. It, that's a now a 14 point swing. It, yeah. You know, and uh my God, dude! Yeah, if we don't, if neither one of those things happens, we win the game. Win the game, even with that incredibly awful offense, they still probably win the game. Yeah, if they don't turn the ball over, you know. Yeah, Turnovers. I don't. I don't know, man. I see. I, right now, I guess you feel better about Cleveland than I do. Like right now, I'm I'm so down. Like I don't, yeah. I don't know. But we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, Cleveland Tuesday? choked today. I don't know. I didn't watch the end of that game. I don't know how they lost, but they dude, were up, they, they choked and Baltimore choked. Like, yeah, Baltimore. Baltimore was up 35 yeah. 14 and let them come back to win. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, I turned it on quickly. Um, oh, I don't know. A wide receiver from Miami there that came from Kansas City. Um, what is escaping? No, that came from Kansas City. Uh, oh, oh, three kill. Yeah, yeah, three kill. I turned on the TV. He's going 60 yards for a touchdown. Like, He's an amazing wide receiver. He changes the game. Yeah. Yeah, have the game plan around him. I think he had another touchdown, so, yeah. It, but it was him and Waddle. Waddle was killing Yeah, Waddle had a good game, too. That's another one. They got some they, were, they were there. so worried about three kill that Waddle just started dominating him. Yep. And had and that last what? touchdown to win the game. They have a great offensive coach and Mike McDaniel. It's all the difference in the world. It, it does. Two attacks. Tiger Valoa scores 42 points on the road in Baltimore. We can't score more than 14 points at home. Because we Patriots. hired a guy that gets fired everywhere he goes. Like, if you pay attention to his career, fired everywhere he goes. A couple more performances like this, and he might be Bro, his next firing. Pitt, if I remember correctly, Pitt fired when he left them. He went to, was it Alabama? No, Maryland. Did he go to Maryland at one point? He was in Maryland. Maryland, too. Point. But yeah. no, he, there was a time frame where he was at Alabama. God, I want to say he was with Nick Saban at Alabama. He was I somewhere. Think. And they said, oh, LSU, yeah. LSU, LSU. That's it. Yep. Gone. Like, no, yeah. the, the guy, he, it's trash. Like his play calling is trash. And Trubisky has been trash. And together we're, we're going to barely get by. Yeah. You made I a believer know. out of me. I'm very <laughs> down now and don't <laughs> believe we are going to score. Uh, we're not scoring more than 10 points a game now. Like I'm literally, that's our window. 10 to, to 10 to um yeah, 10 to 15 points, I think, yeah. is gonna be our uh where we hit you know most also, of the time. We also predicted they started chanting for Pickett right around the third quarter. Yep. Oh, I was it was coming. Porn and, they asked him about it too after the game. Yeah, and he did. He's like, whatever. He said, Yeah, you just gotta, yeah, you just gotta, you know, block it out. Yeah. I don't know, man. Heinz Field, that gets loud there. <laughs> it's just gonna like, get louder too with about the yeah. more. The more the worse he plays, the more it's gonna get. Dude, right, as, I, as a sorry, Steelers fan, though, it's so embarrassing. They don't even have Brady, and we still lose to him. <sighs> it's awful. Like, dude. like I told you, it's on the last so pod, defeating. Being it's in so the defeating. Here, I'm getting hammered over here. I, my Facebook page is lit up with people coming at me. It's just in my DMs. It's like it's a fucking reoccurring nightmare. It just never goes away. 
And of course me, I started talking shit last week after the oh, Patriots yeah. lost and the Steelers won. So you give it, you got to take it. And I'm taking it big time this week. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, it sure is, buddy. It, <laughs> it really sure is. is. Uh, I just, uh, I do. I just, I'm so down now. I don't, I don't know. So I, I think, I, yeah, yeah. Next week's going to be better. I think, I hope. Do you really but think so? I really do. I saw somewhere that Brissette was hurt too. Well, I didn't see that. Wow. Yeah. That's I saw something where he limped off the field or something. I'm not sure if it, he came back in or not, but I saw something and Javon Clowney got taken out of the game. Oof. So it's, you know, we might have Bush gone, hopefully not, but they've got some injuries too. So I don't think the Browns can confuse Trubisky like the Patriots can. I think they'll have a little bit more leeway. Uh, just you got to worry about Miles Garrett just tearing them up with this offensive line. Though that's gonna be, that's that's a little scary. Yeah, we'll I'm preview really this game in a couple of days. I don't want to go too far into it. Um, you got okay. anything else on this game? Are we? Uh, no, we, I'm I'm ready to wash myself of this. Just yeah, I'm move gonna on. Drink it right up this podcast. <laughs> nice. All right, you can find me on Twitter at SteelersSank16. You can find Dave at David M underscore Cora M underscore Cora. You can check out our podcast. It's Steel of Sanctuary podcast. It's doing pretty well. Uh, Steel of Sanctuary uh, on YouTube. Hit us up there too. We've got some good bits. Like I said, what I said, Dave's going to do fantasy football this week. Yep. And email us at D A V E R at steel sanctuary.com. We'd love to hear your feedback until probably Monday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll talk to you later.